Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be doing a full face of sunscreen makeup. Okay. The brand that I'm talking about is Color Science. I saw it being advertised on Instagram while I was mindlessly scrolling through reels one night, as one does. And I was very intrigued. Once I went onto the website, they have a ton of different options meant to replace some of your everyday makeup, like a blush or bronzer. They even have a color correcting palette. So I got my hands on a little bit of everything so that we can do and try on a full face of sunscreen makeup, all right? Let's get into it. We are gonna start with the Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Flex. I believe I purchased this in the shade medium. It comes in four different shades. Not very many, but when you consider what it is, I guess it's okay. Now this is very intriguing, the product itself. It has pigment infused in it. Once you blend it out, it's supposed to kind of like blend into your skin a little bit more. So it's gonna give you more of like that filtered look rather than actual coverage, which is okay by me, especially for like, you know, a tinted sunscreen is practically what this is. So let's go ahead and apply this first. And look, this is what I mean. It comes out white there is definitely pigment in there. Let, let me bring it really close, see if you guys can see it. All right, so I don't know if you guys can make it out, but there's definitely these little tiny dots infused into the sunscreen. And once you blend that out, that is what creates the pigment. You see, ooh, ah, now it still looks a little too light. So now I'm kind of worried. This is supposed to be medium but oh, okay, now I'm not worried anymore. It is a little lighter than I would like it to be, but it does blend into the skin really, really nicely. So let's go ahead and apply a little bit more onto the entire face. I'm just gonna be using my fingers for this. I'm hoping this is going to be like a very fast, easy, type of application so that that way it can become kind of like an everyday thing. Now, when it comes to sunscreen, I know that you are supposed to use at least like two fingers worth of sunscreen all over your face. Uh, and like, I think I, I'm kind of going light with it because I am kind of afraid that it's gonna be like just a white mask on my face, but it's not supposed to be. So we're gonna start off with just the two very light, I would say, very light finger stripes, whatever you wanna call it. I usually use more when I am applying regular sunscreen on the face, but this, okay. I thought it was gonna be like a white cast situation. And I am going under the eyes as well, just like I would with regular sunscreen. I did run out though, so it's okay. We can add more, we probably should add more. So I'm doing just another finger's worth of sunscreen. Now, of course, this is gonna be very light coverage, nothing too, too heavy, but as you guys know, I kind of prefer that as an everyday thing. There's just like so much going on and then the last thing that I wanna worry about is my makeup just kind of getting all over the place. And when I wear light makeup, it just makes it that much easier. And look at that. I mean, look at that. It looks really nice, doesn't it? I mean, like I said, not a whole lot of coverage. I'm just taking whatever's left over from the back of my hand. Not a whole lot of coverage, but it looks, it looks good. It kind of like just evened out my complexion a little bit. Of course, nothing like foundation, but looks pretty good for what it is. It gives you like that really nice, healthy glow, radiance, and it doesn't feel slick or slippery or heavy. Sometimes, depending on the SPF, because I've used quite a few of them over the years, I really love the Super Goop one. I also really like the Paula's Choice one. Those were like my two go-to. Right now, I'm still using the Super Goop one. They're my go-to sunscreens. This one right here. I even have a little one right on my table just in case I forget before I get started with like makeup and everything. So the Unseen Sunscreen, this is the one that I use, this is the one that I love. This one feels like a cream, like a face cream, like a, like a moisturizer. So it's very, very comfortable, very hydrating, and it evens things out a little bit. 
which I love. Let's move on to, I'm gonna do the color corrector last. They only have one shade of the color corrector. I'm gonna leave everything linked down in the description box below in case you guys are interested, in case you wanna look through their collection of products. This is what the color corrector palette looks like. I'm definitely intrigued by these two shades under the eyes, like this one for correcting for sure, and then this one for highlighting the under eye area. I kind of like that it is in powder form so that it's not settling into fine lines, like the, I guess, skin tint, we can call it, the skin tint SPF. It did cover up my darkness a little bit underneath the eyes. Not a lot, but definitely a little bit. It feels really nice, light, hydrated, so I'm, I'm really excited to use this, but this one's gonna be the last product that I'll use. For the eyes, I almost completely forgot, but I did purchase the Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal Therapy from them. I believe you can find this in four different shades, and I grabbed the shade Medium. Now this is kind of like an eye cream, eye sunscreen, a little bit of coverage situation, a lot like the sunscreen. So that's what the shade Medium looks like. That's the one that I purchased. It doesn't really say how to use it other than generously apply sunscreen products before sun exposure. I don't know if I wanna do a lot of this or not, just depending on the consistency. Here, let me see. Okay, so nice, light consistency, not too thick, not too heavy. I wonder if I am gonna get a little bit of grayness underneath the eyes with this but let's just go ahead and apply a little bit of this underneath both eyes. It has this like metal tip, so it's really, really nice and cooling under the eyes. It kind of reminds me of that dermatology product that we just reviewed, only that that, from my recollection, does not have SPF. This one has an SPF of 30 five and the one that went all over the face has an spf of 50 the sun forgettable total protection face shield this one 50 this one 35 let's go ahead and just blend this out i do like how this feels because it is very very light it has a little bit of grip but not heavy at all now since we did not color correct we're going to do that kind of at the end this does make the under eye look a little gray, just a tiny bit gray, but that's okay because hopefully we can get rid of that here in a second. I like the way that it went on and I like how it looks. It's very hydrated, very nice and light. Obviously dark circles are still, they're still there. They're not going anywhere, but I do like what it's doing to the under eye area as far as the way that my skin looks. Let's move on to the next product. This one is a bronzer. This is the Sun Forgettable Total Protection Color Balm in the shade Bronze. They also have this in like blush shades. I thought I grabbed that, but Apparently I didn't because it's not in my box, but that's okay because most of the time I do use bronzer as a blush. So, you know, it's fine, it's fine. So I'm gonna take this and, ooh, okay, I love it. It does have a bit of like, like a baked look in it. Okay, now this is what it looks like not blended and then this is what it looks like blended. What I would compare this to is like a baked bronzer. That's what this is giving. Maybe I do wanna go like right over the face with it. Let's see what, what that looks like. Definitely more of a bronzer. You can't, don't use this to like contour or anything. This is just really to give us a little bit of that warmth on the face and to add some color. Well, that looks great. Ideally, I would blend this out with a sponge, but I definitely need to clean my brushes and my sponges. So I don't have a lot of options. <laughs> so I'm gonna blend it out with my Tarte like Kabuki brush here. Might've been a little too much, but it's okay because we're gonna blend it away. 
or we are going to at least try. Okay, I mean, I may have gone a little overboard, but now we know. Now we know for next time. And if I need to reapply, which I will need to reapply in a couple of hours, the sunscreen. Oh, actually, you know what? That looks fine. I thought it might be a little too much, but it blends out really easily. Ooh, okay. Not mad about it. Next time I might use a little bit less, but definitely not mad about it. It looks pretty good. It looks really nice, actually. So, yay, we made it work. Now, another thing that I grabbed is their pressed foundation. Okay, this one is in the shade medium bisque. That's what it looks like right there. So I'm gonna apply this kind of just around the nose area, kind of around here. Probably should have gone, actually, you know what? I was gonna say, I probably should have gone in with this before the blush or before the bronzer, but that would not have been a good idea because it's a cream bronzer. So I'm gonna just grab a little bit of this. Now that we're all done with like cream products along the face, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the foundation with a brush. This one is the HD Bronze Brush from Sigma, their F29. And I'm just going to apply it here, down the bridge of my nose, along the sides of my nose, just kind of anywhere that I would normally apply a pressed powder or foundation onto. I don't wanna to go too heavy though, because I actually quite liked the way that the um, sunscreen was looking on the skin. Okay. Not even things out a little bit. The under eye is settling though. It is settling into my fine lines just a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and just blend those away. And now we are going to apply the color corrector under the eyes. So this does come with a nice flat little brush. There's no shade names on the back, but it does tell you like what to use for what, or what will, what color corrects what. So since the center shade uh, corrects blues and covers up brown, I am gonna use that, definitely. And then this one is used to correct dark blues. I don't necessarily think I have dark blues, like underneath the eyes, but we are going to use it to see how much that corrects. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit with the tiny little brush, and I'm just gonna dab, dab, dab underneath the eye. But I don't know if I like this brush very much. It's really tiny, and so this might take a while. <laughs> but it is correcting really well, look at that. Okay, as long as this doesn't turn out super dry. So I'm gonna try to be mindful of just how much I use so that we don't end up with a super dry under eye area. And although this little brush makes the process a lot slower, I do like how it is pressing the powder onto the skin. And I really like what the corrector is doing. Okay, so applying it like that, it looks really nice. Let me try a blending brush. This is a tapered blending brush. I'm gonna try to apply a little bit of that, a little bit of this powder with this brush, just to give it a more like softer, more diffused look. I don't know if that did anything actually. Okay, and then after using that, we're gonna go in with the center shade. And this is just gonna help to kind of highlight, brighten, and further conceal the under eye area. Okay, so that's what that looks like with the correcting powder and without the correcting powder. Do I love it? Uh, I'm not so sure, to be quite frank. I don't really know if I love this underneath the eyes. I feel like it can look dry like if you do too much or if you apply it while the under layer is still wet, whatever that might be, if it's like, you know, concealer or foundation or even their three in one, if it is still wet, then that is when I can see this being an issue. However, 
if you go in with a, and that's what I'm gonna try to do on this side, going in with a very, very light layer of a setting powder and then applying this on top of that, that might actually work a little better. So I am gonna use over here on this side, I'm gonna use my Easy Bake Powder from Huda Beauty in the shade Peach. And that I am gonna apply with a brush just to keep the layer very nice and light. And that way when I go in with the correcting powder, it won't be on top of like a tacky wet layer. It'll be on top of a dry layer since we are using the setting powder first. And that should help make it look a lot smoother and not as like dry or cakey. So going in with this first, just a very, very light layer of powder. And now we can apply the corrector on top of that. See if it makes a difference. Really don't know if it will, but we can compare. And yeah, the only thing with this is that it's like the tiniest little brush. If I was correcting a pimple or like a dark, a little dark spot, that'd be fine. But the entire under eye area is gonna take a little bit longer with this guy. Let me change brushes actually. Or better yet, we could do a little powder puff. I'm just gonna press it into the color corrector and this I'll put right on top. Oh yeah, I like that better. Now like with everything, these products are meant to be reapplied throughout the day, every two hours or so, especially if you're in constant like sun exposure, then you definitely want to reapply these. Okay, I do like the powder puff method more. You're gonna see the difference between the way that I usually do it, which is like a light dusting of powder before going in with like a heavier hand of powder versus just going in with a heavy hand of powder without that like nice light setting powder layer. So over here, I am done with that shade. Now we're gonna put a little bit of the brightening shade on top. Just like that. So there is that. Let me zoom you guys in so that you can see the level of coverage underneath the eyes. All right, so here it is. This is the side that we just went straight in with the color corrector. And this is the side where we actually set the under eye area lightly before going in with the powder color corrector. You see the difference? And the last product that I have left is the Lip Shine in the shade Rose. This has an SPF of 35. Everything I believe has an SPF of 35 with the exception of the Face Shield Flex. Actually, that's a lie. The Pressed Powder, that only has an SPF of 20. So the Pressed Powder only has an SPF of 20. The uh, Face Shield, 50 and everything else has an SPF of 35. And you definitely need an SPF on your lips. Uh, as I found out after going to the beach one spring for spring break, not using an SPF on my lips and my lips were so chapped. They were, it was so bad. Never again, okay? Never again did I not wear SPF on my lips because the sun will get you, man. All right, so this is the final look. What do you guys think? I really like it. This is perfect for like an everyday and you're completely covered, at least your face, from the sun. Like, you know, I, I don't do extended, extended um, sun exposure a ton. Um, of course, like if my son is playing soccer or we're at soccer practice, then yes, absolutely. But it's never for more than like an hour or two. So this I'm going to wear for the next couple of hours. And then I'm gonna come back to reapply certain things and also to check in and see how everything is looking. And uh, yeah, go from there. So I will be back for a quick midday check-in in a couple of hours. Oh, and what time is it? It is 12.57 and I have a cooking timer on because we're making spaghetti. Anyway, I'll see you back here in a couple of hours for a quick midday check-in. Okay, I'm back for a quick midday check-in. It is 2.30, 2.30 on the dot. The only thing that I've noticed is the under eye area. It is settling in to fine lines down there. So it did continue to settle into fine lines. I am just gonna blend it away 
with my finger. This is another reason why I didn't put any mascara on my lower lashes. I just wanted to make sure that if I needed to do this, that the mascara wasn't gonna get in the way. Now it's like, I guess minimal settling, nothing too, too crazy, but enough to where like, it's definitely noticeable, especially if you're like up close to me, you know? I haven't really noticed the sunscreen settling into like smile lines, fine lines, my 11 right here. I haven't noticed any of that, but, oh, it did, I guess a little bit of cracking. I don't know, very, very minimal. Nothing that I'm like, ooh, very, very obvious right there. So I'm just gonna let it be. Now I am gonna take a little bit of the pressed foundation and just kind of like reset the T-zone a little bit, just like around the nose, a little bit around the forehead, just to kind of like freshen up, if you will, you know? So that's what we are looking like now a couple of hours in and of course we're reapplying gloss i actually really like the way that this feels it's shiny but not sticky slick but not oily like i don't know it's just like the perfect perfect combination and it stays on the lips it doesn't drift off into the mouth. That's like a big thing with glosses. It's like, if I can taste it, game over. If I can taste it, if it feels too sticky, if it feels too slick, no thank you. But this one, very, very comfortable. And it is actually very like complimentary, even with like my very heavily textured lips. So anyway, so far so good two hours in. I'll see you later. I'll be back in a couple of more hours and I might finish the video by then or I might push it to like four, wearing it for four more hours and see what it looks like at the end of the day. Not really sure yet, but anyway, I'll see you for my final check-in of the day and maybe a few more hours. All right, I am back for, I guess, a final check-in. This wasn't supposed to be a review. This was supposed to be more of like a first impression, but because I did want to show you guys exactly how this wears, even just after a few hours. That's why we are here. I changed my mind like literally as I was filming the video this morning or this early afternoon because I know that with these particular products, you have to reapply them. They don't, you know, claim to last like X amount of hours or to be long lasting at all. Like every single one of these products on their packaging, it'll tell you to reapply, to limit the exposure to direct sun. If you are going to expose yourself to reapply every two hours, like, you know, the typical stuff. So because of that, I didn't want to do a review because I obviously didn't want to judge it so harshly because it's not meant to be worn like for a super extended period of time. However, now that I've worn it for a few hours, I, I have... I have opinions and I'm pretty solid with what I think about everything. I really like most of the products that I wore today. Most of them. The um, all over like the face, what is it? The face shield flex. This is absolutely going to be in my routine, especially on days where I'm not wearing anything other than sunscreen. If I want to, you know, just kind of put a little, little tiny bit of something on, like a tiny filter, that's when I will reach for that, which honestly, it's more often than not. So that will get used up for sure. The gloss will absolutely get used up for sure. I love the way that it feels on the lips. It's not too slick. It's not too thick. It's not sticky. It doesn't like slide around. And most importantly, it didn't end up in my mouth, okay? And so I really, really like it. I like that it has like a hint, like a little hint of a color, of, of a shade on here. It's a little pink, but not too pink, not overwhelming, not to wear. You know, it looks like uh, I'm halfway done up, I guess. Um, that's the only way I can describe it in my head. The bronzer, I also really enjoyed. Although for me, like I said in the morning, it's more of a baked bronzer than a bronzer bronzer, but it does give a nice color to the face and I can, you know, I can wear it as a blush as well. So I really like that. The one thing that I was, and I guess I'm, I don't know if I'm disappointed by it, but it just didn't work out very well is both of the products that I placed underneath the eyes. 
Those, I obviously cannot wear them together and expect that they're gonna last all day. One's a cream, one's a powder, so it's not like I can really reapply a whole lot throughout the day, but I do plan on wearing them separately also with other things. So probably not this one with other things, the three-in-one, the eye cream that really reminds me of the Dermalogica eye cream that I think I reviewed not too long ago, but anyway, that's what this one reminds me of. So for like a quick trip, a quick errand, if I wanna put it on just to look a little bit more put together, sure. Other than that, probably not gonna reach for it a whole lot because it did settle into my fine lines quite a bit, even after I set it and everything. So that one, not a huge fan of. However, the color correcting palette, this one I am gonna continue to play with a little bit more. I'll pair it with like, you know, different concealers, different color correctors underneath, like just different things underneath it to see if I can get it to look good because at the beginning of the day, this, even though it was on top of this, it looked good, it looked good. So it's promising. I will continue to play with it and I'll let you guys know. I'll keep you guys posted perhaps over on Instagram as to, you know, if I made it work and how I made it work and all that good stuff. Um, so overall, not bad. I'm not, I'm not upset. Oh, I also really like this one, the finishing powder. Well, this is supposed to be a pressed foundation, but it's not, I don't think that it's like super, super high in coverage. Could have also been because I did use it with a brush as opposed to with a sponge because it does come with this sponge, which I don't particularly love. It's just, you know, kind of it's dense, but not too dense. It's kind of thin and it's just not, I don't know. Let's see how much coverage we get with this. I guess I should test that out, right? Okay, I guess that would give you higher coverage. But right now with the tan that I currently have, the color rather, I would not do the powder foundation. It's just way too light, obviously. But I will use it as a finishing powder and that one I'll probably use alongside the SPF. So these two I'll use together. Like I said, the only one that I'm kind of like, mm, is the three in one. But other than that, I'm happy with my purchase and I'm happy I tested it out tried it out today. So that completes today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed today's product review and that you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. And also don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I absolutely love to interact with you guys. As always, take care and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah. Bye.